Leo, hello. I want to welcome my new subscribers. Um, this here might be long, and it is my vision board. Yeah, I know, fancy paper, huh? I know, I know. That's why I'm saying this one here, if you wanted to go ahead and bypass once I start talking, I truly understand. I truly understand, and I don't take any offense. Uh, this might be for people that know me well. Um, basically, I've never even said a whole lot about myself in a long time, but basically, I bought a house 30 years ago. And it's about the end of the 30 years. And for the last 15, I've been kind of isolated without a car or anything, or the ability to leave of my own accord. And it's about come to an end. I just have a few months left and well things are kind of caving in on me a little bit feeling here and it's strange because it's near the end. I'm going to kind of draw as I go. I'm not an artist and I'm not an architect either. But I just don't feel very happy. I got a house that um, is probably bigger than I need. Yeah, let's, let's start with a little house here. The first floor. I have a house that's kind of big for me. There's three bedrooms and I made two of them grow rooms. Because I really didn't have stuff to put in there. But I like my grow rooms in there. And I've got a two and a half car garage in the backyard that, yeah, I don't ever go in there. I might put my vehicle in there. I'm building one, you know, to travel in and things. But I just got a lot to take care of, a lot to, um, to heat, cool, everything else. And I just made me start thinking that maybe it would be a good idea to sell it, buy a piece of property, and build my house of the future upon it. I've been looking at property. That's a tricky one. It's a tricky one. This whole thing's tricky. But this is a vision board for me. See, I've never really had one. I always keep everything in my head. But let me keep going with this little house here. It's just a, I want to get it on paper and then get it to someone with some kind of dimensions so they could tell me approximately how much a box this size with a second story on it, yep, I want one, will cost me per square foot to build. Then I can have more of an idea of whether or not my idea is feasible. Now, I believe in the law of attraction, and I want to first of all say I'm not trying to attract people that are wanting to come and sell me something, or offer me something, a product, or um, anything. I have realtors in my family, I got building people in my family, I even have a building supplier. I buy all my stuff from at a discounted rate. That's how we built the garage in the backyard. I will seek out and find, you know, the right people to do this for me. I know those of you that know me all are wondering, why on earth would she want to do that with how much she hates being scammed and dealing with scammers and all? It's because um, I'll do my homework. I used to run medical offices. When I want to do my homework, I'm very good at everything that I do like that. This here in the middle, I just wanted to say, this here will be the fireplace that runs through the middle of the house. This is a house of the future, by the way. The imprint this will leave behind will be nearly nothing. So I'm explaining as I go, because I'm trying to keep track of all this. My mind sometimes can... Whew, but I've been thinking about this house for like 15 years. So I've obviously really wanted it. Now, the fireplace itself, I want to be made out of like a rock or a brick that retains heat, kind of radiates the heat throughout the house. And I like it fueled by propane. Ah, great time for my pen not to work, of course. Anyway, yep, I want it filled by propane. It's cleaner. It's more efficient as far as I'm concerned. And um, it's easy. 
it's just really easy. Yeah, the propane tank basically, yeah, they're kind of hideous looking, but uh, in the long run, it's just really easy. If I had wood burning, we'd have a different scenario altogether. But in the back of the house, in the back of the kitchen, there'll be a cook stove. In case everything goes down, I can still have a way to stay warm and cook my food and dry my clothes should they be wet. So I don't know really how to put a cook stove back here. This is terrible. I'm going to have to get a new pen. Because, yeah, we've barely begun. Um, oh, this is just hideous. Okay, cook stove is my second source of heat. Yes, I know this is hideous. But as I go, I can make things look nicer. Can you see that in there? <laughs> this is the only book I ever used for anything serious. It's got the redesign of how I'm going to better lay out where all my kitchen appliances go in the kitchen. I don't need to redesign the kitchen. I needed to fit everything where it could more properly go without being all over my countertops. Story for another day. This house here, this house will be efficient. It may not be glamorous, but it will be efficient. I want us to have a nice porch. What that entails just yet, other than the fans and a nice porch, I just really don't know yet. But I do know on top of that porch and on top of the roof, oh, yep, I had a different color for the roof. A top of the roof here. And the roof for the second story, or the first story actually. And there'll be a little garage attached here somewhere. There are the solar panels. That have their roofing tiles that have solar panels incorporated into them. So there's no worrying about drilling through the roof and causing leaks and this all these solar panels should take care of most everything I've got going on except for air conditioning I'm still going to be hooked up to the grid I would be insane I would be insane really to try and do all this and not be if I found that I lived I built this and I lived in it and I found I never needed the electricity Okay, then maybe I'd consider not. But I happen to know that there are foggy days, well not here, not really foggy, but cloudy days, snowy days. Um, I don't know, I, I just, uh, at this point in time, I would feel better about staying, you know, hooked up to the grid. Now we're going to talk about a touchy subject. And that is the septic system, sewer. For argument's sake, The place I buy, I'm looking for a piece of land with a well, a good well, and having a septic or sewer tank already there. It's, you know, there's a lot of codes and things like that. I don't like arguing about things. Fine. It doesn't mean I have to pump water into it. All right. Because I'm going to talk to you about how my home is going to be a little bit more efficient with this water and with this waste. With the water, there'll be a little water tank. Probably in the well house. Probably, oh, between two to five hundred gallons. And in that tank will be all of my rainwater. as well as all of my gray water. Now, gray water is all of your laundry water, um, anything that is actually not put down that toilet. It's all gray water. And I will have a filtration system that that is shot through 
Well, I'll just put filtered. So that I can push it out with the water pressure, because it's already up here in the water tank, on a timer for my little fields back here. I'll just put little flowers. So that it can water with drip irrigation all of my garden and all of the plants that I have around. Now in my house as well there's vacuum robots. I didn't spell that right I know. And mopping. I already use them all the time. I've been doing it for 21 years. So they'll be robotic vacuum and mops and outside they'll be robotic lawnmowers. Yes, they do exist. You have to make sure the ground is picked up and everything. But yes, they really do exist. Now I'll talk to you about the sensitive subjects. Because I, of course, I'm going to want a bathroom downstairs. Well, I'm just going to put it up here. Bathroom. And a bathroom upstairs. But my toilets, I'm looking at two right now. One has like seven cycles everything goes through. And by the time it gets to the bottom, you pull it out and it's dirt that you can go out and dump outside. Or they have another one that incinerates it to where it's just ash. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Do you understand about my less of a footprint? Do you know how many thousands of gallons of water I don't? I'm just saying, do you know? Think about every time you flush the toilet. I know because I happen to use dehumidifiers and that's how I flush my toilet like from uh, January to, well I'm still doing it here in November. It takes about two gallons to flush the toilet of water. Every time you go. Well, I've been watching all of that because I've been trying to conserve and things. So I happen to know I have such less of a footprint. I've said what I've said about the law of attraction. And then I said, yeah, and don't, 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 don't contact me. <laughs> because it's the law of the universe. You know, kind of like if you build it, they will come. This may not ever come to fruition. But nothing ever will come from come to fruition if we don't make the steps towards seeking it. My first steps is looking for land, kind of pricing this stuff out, see if I'm pipe dreaming or not. I'd hate to think so. I'd really hate to think so. Let me explain solar to you for just a second here. Just basically, all these solar panels I'm going to have. Oh, I made a mess. Well they're going to bring the energy into a battery. Do I have room to right here? And I'm going to have enough battery to store the energy. And that's what I plug my appliances into. Basically. It doesn't matter what scale you ever do this on. You can do it for charging your phone, you know, hooking up appliances all the way up to an entire house. It's just hard to be able to pull in enough power and have it here to plug into for an air conditioner or a heater. If you know differently, then I'd really like to hear from you. Not if you have a product for me to buy, but just if you can explain to me how it can be done any other way. I'd love to know that. But this is basically me putting it out into the universe in its very raw form. <laughs> But at least it gives me something to better occupy my thoughts with. I'm going crazy here. A little bit. You can imagine. Maybe you can't. I can't wait until I can actually have my little box to drive around in and show you all the places I wish I would have seen. Because they're all like, oh gosh, a lot of them are like within an hour or two of my house. Furthest one so far near is... um. I'm going to take you to uh, Arkansas, a place called Hot Springs. 
there's a few places down there but basically they're all geological tre treasure troves and that's what's interesting about getting a well where did I put that well at oh yeah here's the well when I get all the information on a well wherever I buy a house it will show me all the layers all the way underneath the earth that they went through to get to that well so I'll see, you know, where the granite is, you know, the limestone. I'll see all, all the information, geological information underneath my house. That'll fascinate me to no end. And all of these geological wonders I'm going to show you, um, I didn't realize I lived right on top of. So when there's a violent occurrence, like a volcano or lava explosions like that, they leave behind these little treasures little crystals and things. Um, I'm going to show you that and I'm hoping it'd be really interesting if I had a little cave or something underneath there. I did want to add um, that this is a house of the future but it is not a house that is reliant upon the internet or Wi-Fi in order for it to function or that wouldn't be very smart as often as it goes out for me anyway. And I will always have enough power to back me up in a power outage for the things that I'm going to need to sustain myself in here. But even if that goes out, I'll be able to self-sustain in here. It's about all I had for you this time. And I'm sorry that it's such a... It looks like a little kid drew it, I'm sure. But out of what I just drew, I should be able... Because I even have the plans for the inside of the house. Because I'm going to have my grow rooms up here in my bedroom. I'm always going to have grow rooms. You never really quit. Uh, no. So I'm going to have a grow room and a bedroom and a, and a bloom room up here with me. Probably near the bathroom. Not too sure if it would make sense. It's easier with water. But every room in this house is functional. It's there for a reason. That's, that's, that's all I really had for you today. I feel a bit better, actually. Because I know at least it's there now. In all of its little squiggles, at least I said what all those little squiggles are in case I forget. But that's what I'm working on right now for the next few months along with doing these little videos and stuff. Um, because I need to occupy my mind with something that's positive. And I'm not a person that makes big moves fast. So all the time I'm driving around looking at all these geological wonders, I could be checking out all these really nifty little plots of land that are for sale and I can actually go there and take a look at them. But I just, I need to stay within the same vicinity as far as being the distance from my parents and um, uh, town as I would call it. You know, I really don't want to be more than a half an hour outside of town anymore. But this keeps me busy in a positive way. That's really all I had for you today though. You guys have yourselves a wonderful day. Get out in the sunshine while you still can. Winter's right around the corner. Believe me, I know. It's isolating. <laughs> but lucky for me, there's Christmas and Thanksgiving coming, and it won't be quite so isolating. Have yourselves a lovely day. You know I will as well. I'll talk to you later. <laughs> Bye.